Hello, today I'm going to be covering a little trick uh, in Maya, which I use quite regularly. Um, it allows you to assign a shader based on how far away it is from the camera. So as you can see in the viewport, uh, the closer I get to the ground, the texture fades from a dirt texture over to a clover texture. Uh, so you can see this in the viewport, you can also see this uh, on render, um, which is really cool. And it'll work for Maya software, it'll work for Mentoray, and it'll even work for V-Ray. Uh, so you're not limited to the render engine you're using. So, we'll start, uh, we'll start clean with a Lambert. I'll just delete all my unused nodes. So I've got a Lambert, um, and a plane. Just a, a plane that's 2,000 units uh, in width and in height. Okay, so, what we're going to need to do is grab a multiply divide. Um, a sampler info node, a remap value node, and a blend colors node. All right, so the sampler nodes where everything happens, um, this can give us all of this sort of information um, based on a camera sample as uh, is taken in a scene. Uh, so that's very cool. Um, so I'm gonna plug that into the multiply divide. Uh, and what we want is the, the, the camera uh, Z. Now, the difference between the point camera, point object, and point world, well, it's pretty obvious in that uh, this is the how far away something is based on the camera. This is how far away something is based on the world position, the absolute position, so it'll never change. And this is how far something is based on that object. And this is for each sample that's taken in the scene when you render. Um, there are other useful things in here, like facing ratio, which is a float value between 0 and 1, and that's how much something is facing towards the camera. And that's cool if you want to uh, remap reflections, um, such as the reflections that are facing like right on that edge of the camera, you can boost them more intensively to give them a cool Fresnel effect. Uh, you can also use the uh, camera normals to create an indistance uh, pass which is cool uh, for, as I said, keeping the Fresnel when you're grading uh, or changing the color of an object. So we're gonna grab the camera point Z, plug that into the input Z in the multiply divide. We're going to multiply that by negative one to give us how far away something is from the camera. We're gonna middle mass drag that over and get the output Z and plug that into the input value. We're gonna grab the input value um, actually, before we do that, I'm just going to assign the blend color to the Lambert color. So you'll see that we're getting between the red and blue, which is purple, and this blender controls, you know, how much is, you know, of which color we're choosing. So we're going to plug in the remapped value of the sampler distance from the camera into the blender, and now we're just getting a red. Uh, for, the reason for that is that the output max is only set to one, and that's basically one uh, unit in front of us. But this is quite a huge object, it's 2,000, so we're going to make this half that, which is 1,000. When I do that, you'll see that basically everything is set up for what I had before, in that the closer you get to this object, the more blue it appears. So, you know, that's the most important part. Um, there is something else we can look at, which is in the remapping of this we can look at, you know, the interpolation, how that's defined. So, for example, no interpolation whatsoever, and you've just got that really fine line that looks crap, so we won't be doing that. But we could look at linear interpolation, we could even look at smooth interpolation. And we can also, uh, you know, push out that distance from the camera uh, further away. That's just controlled by the input max, so... It's very much like how you would do a z-depth pass. Um, so we'll put that set the uh, we'll set it to fifteen hundred actually, and now we'll look at this. We'll assign the textures I was using uh, to color one and color two. So for color one, we'll assign the clover texture. Uh, it doesn't really matter. You can assign any texture you want, obviously. Um, we'll call that distance, and then for color two will assign the dirt texture. I actually had it the other way around, but that doesn't really matter. Um, this is just a preview.
so there you go. The further away and then when I get closer, you start to see that dirt texture show up. If I can just repeat it a few more times. Um, there you go. And I'll grab that clove one and I'll also repeat that a few more times. There you go. Uh, it is the reverse of what I had before, um, but doesn't really matter. Um, we can easily change that around. So you can plug that into color two, and we'll plug that into color one. There you go. So now, when we get closer, it changes to the clover texture. There you go. So that's a cool little trick. Uh, thank you for watching.